I didn't think anybody was working here at Station 19. Uh, got a new driveway. At any rate, I'm here in little uh, Virginia Highlands. I picked to take me a little ride up this street here. I want to show y'all something. Hey, inflation, how you doing there, buddy? You hanging in there? Yeah, ain't got no other choice, do you? I'm just a block from Virginia Highland. Well, two blocks to Virginia. 1990, wheelchair access. What's up? The national average price per gallon of gasoline is $4.56 as of Monday, which is 40 cents higher than it was just a month ago. But in parts of the country, such as California, the price is even higher, up to $6.06, .06, which just seems insane. The West Coast seems to be getting hit harder than anywhere else in the country. A year ago, when prices started to rise, Joe Biden said this. We have been in very, very close contact with Colonial Pipeline, which is the one area you're talking about where the, one of the reasons the gasoline prices are going up. And I think you're going to hear some good news in the next 24 hours. And I think we'll be getting that under control. Secondly, um, uh, I have, uh, in the meantime, made it easier for us to have lifted some of the restrictions on the transportation of fuel, as well as access to the United States military providing fuel and with vehicles to get it there where places where it's badly needed. And... Um, I'd also point out that I think what this shows is that uh, I think we have to uh, make a greater investment in education as it relates to being able to train and graduate more people proficient in cybersecurity. Uh, and uh, I've been saying for a long, long time now, I know I probably, you could probably say it for me, but... Uh, I think that one of the most important things we have to do to reclaim our place as a leading innovator in the world is to uh, uh, have a better educated workforce. This was about the time that the Colonial Pipeline got hacked with ransomware. So he also points to training the workforce in cybersecurity. So at first, when prices are rising, albeit not what they are now, he points to the attack on one pipeline. And then, six months ago, Biden addressed the problem in this way. You know, today, though, I, I want to address another challenge that families are facing. And the one I think they're most focused on right now, high gas prices. This is a problem, not just here in the United States, but around the world. The price of gasoline has reached record levels recently in Europe and in Asia. In France, at the end of the last month, it reached about $7 per gallon. In Japan, it's about $5.50 per gallon, the highest it's been in years. Of course, it's always painful when gas prices, gas prices spike. Now, for one thing, no one in America cares what the gas prices are outside of America. That's not our problem. That was back when the price was $3.40. Yet, Biden compares our prices to Europe and Asia, trying to create a basis of comparison. He then blames it as a supply and demand issue and says he's going to authorize strategic reserves to be released. Well, did that work? Here we are six months later, and the price is over a dollar higher than when he had this press conference. And whoever wrote this speech for him, no doubt a true Mensa member, mentions that gas prices were high in 2012 and 2014, when Obama was president. They were not high during Trump's four years. Isn't that odd? Did we all of a sudden create 10 million drivers in the last year? This speechwriter provides facts that hurt Obama and Biden's records on gas prices. Biden goes on to say that he's having the Federal Trade Commission look into whether the oil and gas companies are pocketing the difference between the wholesale price of gas, which Biden says is down, and the retail price of gas that we drivers pay at the pump. To that end, in six months, what has the FTC learned? Do we even know? Sounds like BS lip service. 
In subsequent statements, Biden directed the blame at Russian President Vladimir Putin. Putin's war is already hurting American families at the gas pump. Since Putin began his military buildup on Ukrainian borders, just since then, the price of the gas... The Communism? Last time I was in here, I caught myself drooling. Ah. Uh. Got too high, too fast. And then once again, blames Putin. And has a hard time saying Putin's price hike. I think the alliteration gets to him. Then just this week, at a press conference with the Japanese Prime Minister, Biden said this. And when it comes to the gas prices, uh, we're going through an incredible transition that is taking place that God willing when it's over will be stronger and the world is stronger and less reliant on fossil fuels when this is over. This is going to be a haul. This is going to take some time. This time around, no mention of the pandemic, low supply, high demand, or Putin, but this time he talks about a transition, which is perhaps his most revealing statement today. So let's look at this timeline. First, I want you to see the prices over a three-year period. So look at this graph right here. From July of 2019 till about May of 2020, gas prices fall. These are the Trump years. Then right in January of 2021, look at how prices start to increase. Now let's look at the trends from May of last year through today. You can see how in May of last year, when the Colonial Pipeline was hacked, prices went up but not all that much. On November 8th, the average price was $3.50 per gallon when Biden talked about supply and demand. On February 24th, 2022, Putin attacked Ukraine. And four days later, you will see prices start to go up around February 28th. But on March 14th, they take a slight dip, though they remain around $4.20 or so. But then they begin to climb again. The most current explanation has been a tough transition off of fossil fuels which of course has no plants here in the United States, which makes no sense either. That's just another bow to the green lobby. It's just important to understand the impact of policy on the economy. They will give you every excuse from the pandemic to Russia, but they're not telling you the truth. What is masked in making us greener are policies that affect everyone, and especially middle and lower incomes much, much more. Your dollar is worth less because of bad policy. Your gas is more expensive because of existing bad policy and policies that make the problem even worse. You've probably seen these stickers of Joe Biden at gas pumps that read, I did that. Well, that is absolutely true. He did do that. And there is no end in sight to this. They want to force the change or the transition, as he calls it, God willing. The lip service of releasing some of our strategic reserves is a pathetic response to a man-made error. Releasing reserves depletes our reserve supply. But if you want all unlawful migration is not acceptable, we will enforce our borders, including through innovative, coordinated action with our regional partners. Biden also said a new plan related to immigration will be announced later this week. Renzo, spiegami tu, che cosa sta dicendo questo qua? Ma forse dice la verità. Ma come è possibile se siamo andati con noi tra di due? Aspetta, aspetta, You think you know everything? I know my rights. Patrick e Henry say, when the people want to be free, sometime they gotta fight. If you know get off of my land, sometime it's gonna come pretty soon. This is not your land, it's our land, and you're not gonna farm on it. Now look, if you'd like to stay here, I think sometime is here. Now you get on your horse to get off of my land. Now, but off of my land, I'm not... Well, if that, if that same standard of domestic terrorism is going to apply, then why isn't this being called out as domestic terrorism? You have Justice Kavanaugh, who is trying to be intimidated because of his stance on Roe v. Wade. You have someone that literally got an assassination kit together, drove from California, on their way to Kavanaugh's house, was there... The marshals asked him, hey, he turned around and walked away and called 911, and they, where is everybody at? No one's calling us out. If this same stuff were to happen to our newest justice, Justice Jackson, you would have the Democrats bouncing up and down, causing domestic terrorism, and we've got to stop this, and we've got to root this out. 
But the difference between the two is that this gentleman represented their narrative. I mean, it was it was Chuck Schumer, the leader Schumer, who in 2020 stood up and said that Kavanaugh was going to pay for Roe v. Wade. You call people out like this, be consistent. But if it, but the Democrats are so silent on that issue because it fits their narrative that it's not even it's not just laughable, it's dangerous. And the left media that's also silent on this, not calling it domestic terrorism, not calling it like they would if this was a, a, a group that.